action whenever you're ready. See you later, Fredo. Have a good one. Cheers, Cheers mate. I was just waiting for Fred to extract himself. Literally, they just said action as you went. See you all. <laughs> See you later, Fredo. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. Goodbye. So we've, uh, I mean, <laughs> Hello, welcome back to Clean Classics. It's been a couple of weeks since I spoke to you last, just to run you through a few of the bits we've been on with this the, the last couple of weeks. 2A you saw last time is now stripped down to its chassis and, and flat packed into the into the side of the workshop there. The series one that was all flat packed that, that we you just saw the bare chassis last time is now, as you can see, is rolling on its axles and we yeah, just continue with the, the build up on that one. The batteries that you saw us finished putting together last time. We've been working on wiring up the looms. We've also got a new 3D printer that's turned up. I, I, I did say it was on its last legs last time. We've had to get another one to just keep going. We, we, and, and, and I'll show you one of the parts we make with that 3D printer. The last time you saw these batteries, well, they looked exactly the same, but the work that's been going on um, has been on getting the BMS looms together. We've actually built this, this jig, which, which means we can just, we can, we can make a loom up for, for one of these underseat battery boxes whenever we like. It mimics the shapes and spaces inside the battery. But basically what's going on here is each cell within a battery pack is monitored by the BMS. Therefore, we need a sense tap on each cell. They also allow the BMS to balance the cells, to keep the whole battery pack under control and safe. Once these looms are made, we build them into the bottom portion of the terminal covers. And then what we do is we, we transfer the whole thing straight on top of the battery pack. We have a process as to how we connect them up. The, the more modules and cells you have joined together, the higher the voltage gets, the higher the danger. So we keep the packs split for as long as possible as we, as we go through the build process. We've got, we've got procedures and then tests. With the battery assembly, obviously, it's very important and we're constantly developing that. I mentioned earlier we've got the new 3D printer. So why don't you come and have a look around the corner at how we make some of the parts in-house on the 3D printer, this terminal cover being, being one of those. So the, the old machine here, and we'll get her back going, but, but it's, it's taking more and more time to keep her running. It suits us to have two machines anyway, so we finally bit the bullet and got another printer machine. You can see it printing away happily here. And yeah, here we have a pile, the, the battery terminal cover bases. And um, we'll also, once they're built up, we'll be printing out the, the lids for these as well, which just goes over the top. So eff effectively the, um, all terminals are surrounded by a electrically insulated cover um, just to keep it as safe as possible. So we've also been doing a load of work on, on the CAD for the Series 1. Briefly saw last week, Alfie was working on the under seat boxes. The design is now together and, and looking good for that. So what, what we do now is once we've got the, the tub back on here and we can line the seat box up, we'll do a load of physical modelling just to, to ensure the design that we've got that we've got. We've got scan data, which gives us a good guide. We, we measured the car before we took it apart, but, but, but now we've got, got an actual design together. We can, we can, we can model in cardboard, we can model in, in whatever suitable materials to just ensure that, that, that what, we're, what we've designed is, is gonna fit nicely to the car with, with minimal hassle the first time around. It's always the goal. Um, so yeah, we've got the underseat battery boxes. Another guy, Sam, has, has done a cracking job of getting the subframe rails. Same design as the Series 2s and 3s, but needed a load of changes on the Series 1. So yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna model them up, physically model them up um, as well. Um, and, and yeah, I think the, the only remaining part, detail to sort of uh, get sorted in the CAD is, is the, the front battery box now, um, which is gonna be a relatively simple part of the job. So we're getting nice and close to actually starting to create some parts, which is always the exciting part. As I was saying down, down at the series one, we've been working on the CAD. Here's kind of an example of the CAD in progress. So what we do is when we first get a new car, because we've done this all for the series twos, the series threes, it's all done, it's a known product, and we just do small changes. But when we get a new car, we inspect it, but we once it's stripped, we, we 3D scan it. Our, our, our equipment is crude, but that's all we really need. We don't use the 3D scanning as like accurate dimensions. It's just an aid for assembling in space and, and it just gives us the reminders, oh, there's, a, there's an engine mount sticking out of the chassis at that point. It, it's, it speeds up the, the chuck around process whilst we're trying to get all the parts to fit you know, in, in 3D space in, in, a sensible, in sensible positions. Um, so yeah, you can see here, 
this is this is looking at the, the underside of, of the series one at the moment got battery box got the the lt230 transmission our, our subframe the motor the spin around you can see um it's it's fluffy in the bits that don't matter but, but actually close around the chassis around the seat boxes is we've got some reasonable detail so yeah we utilize the uh um the 3D scans very effectively there. But like I said, we don't worry about the detail and, and the, the accuracy with it. It's purely as a, as a sort of, it, it describes the space to us so we can just get stuff in nice and quickly. So now you can see in this 3D model how everything's laid out. So you've got, the, this is the battery box we've been working on. It's, it's we, we, I'm, I'm really pleased with how Alfie's managed to compact the, the design versus previous iterations it's it's uh it's shrunk down which is what it needed to we, we it does have less modules in um but it but it's afforded us a more a more compact design be easy to build hide away better into the seat box area and and yeah the there's then the powertrain subframe which is which is yeah again we just need to to actually do some physical modeling on that make sure we're in the right ballpark um and and then the front the front battery box is to come one thing we're moving to with this design, which is different from the, the series twos and threes, is we've got, we're really, really pleased with the way in which these particular frames hold, hold the batteries. The front box in the series twos and threes is, is held slightly differently. It, it, it works nicely, it, 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 it's, it's a really efficient use of space. However, the, this this design is 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 really easy to work on, really easy to build. It's, it's the ones we were looking at downstairs with the wiring. So we're, we're basically taking that frame system and making a third identical module that goes in the front, which is you know, it's 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 got a few more batteries in the front, but actually in terms of build, in terms of quantities of parts made, in terms of cost effectivity of the build, it's going to be a really nice step. It's progressing nicely and we will take a load of inspiration from this design and feed it back into the, the sort of second generation, if you like, of the, of the series twos and threes. And, and actually some of the work we've been doing later this week has been to do the control. Yeah, we, we're planning on, on doing quite a big update in the way we control the system. The main software update we've been working on at the moment is, has been really focusing on, on the, the safety and the quality of how everything works together. No one's really going to notice any difference, but, but, it, but it makes me happier to progress those things. The more robust we can make it, the better a system we'll have, the, the, better, the higher quality a product will be. And, you know, this is it's what we're all about, is, is pushing all of that forward. Last time we were here, the, the axles were all on the bench, all in bits. We've now fitted new wheel bearings, new seals, and adjusted the, the, the pinion bearings and stuff, the preload on them. And everything is all back together in the back axle. Front axle is the same, it's been fully rebuilt, so it's had new swivel balls, new bearings, bushes, seals, everything. It's been completely gone through. Both axles have now got new brake shoes in and they've had the wheel cylinders cleaned up and inspected and refitted. The, the brief for this build was anything that was usable was, was reused. So the leaf springs and actually the shock absorbers were fairly recent and were in good order. So we've refitted those, waiting on some split pins for the bottoms for them of the right, of the right diameter. Got the bulkhead going back on. We're just about to start piping the brakes back up and we'll, we'll look at that on the bench. That's where we're at with this one, really. These are some other bits of the Series 1 that are getting ready for going back on. So the steering box, someone's upgraded it to a later type steering box. So this is actually uh, what they call a recirculated ball type steering box, which was fitted to the later 88 and 109 inch Series 1s. So um, I'm, I'm going through that and any bearings that need replacing will be replaced. Any, any wear, we'll try and take it out and minimise it or replace replace parts as, as necessary. So that's why that's all in bits. So that'll all be going back together and once it's been fully inspected and reconditioned. So we've got some other parts that have come off the Series 1. This is the steering relay bottom plate. Um, it's actually quite corroded and, and worn, so it does result in a bit of movement on the new steering relay. So we've, uh, we're, we're going to be buying a new one of those. Um, also, the handbrake pivot is quite worn. I don't know if you can see that, but it's got it's got quite a groove in the pin, which results in quite a bit of movement on the lever. So that'll be replaced as well. I'm just working on the pedals at the moment. We're going to start putting the brakes back in the Series 1. So we need a brake pedal back in it. Because we use a, a an LT230 transfer box, we don't use the main gearbox. So you don't need a clutch. 
So the clutch pedal and associated linkages all become redundant. So I'm gonna make up a spacer collar for the, for the pedal pivot pin, um, just, to, just to space the brake pedal out by the right amount so that it sits in the right place on the pivot, but without, without refitting all of, these, all of these clutch components. So these are the parabolic springs from the 2A build. We've checked them over and checked that there's no cracks, dodgy bends or anything like that. I've pushed out the bushes on the press behind me and then they'll be refurbished and painted black. They'll um, have some new bushes put back into them and then they'll go onto the chassis once the chassis is repainted. So it should be looking really nice, hopefully. The Series 1's had exactly the same treatment, new bushes and a refurbishment um, and they've been checked over to check that there's nothing, nothing dodgy going on. Hopefully they should come out looking like those because they look smart. So this is the bulkhead out of the Series 2A. The next, next thing with this is it'll be completely stripped so all the dash will be removed, the pedals, everything will be completely stripped um, and then it will, it's going to go to our to our sand blasters, it'll be blasted off completely so we can see what we're dealing with and then we can start to order some panels and start to make the necessary repairs. Thanks for watching. Really hope you've liked see, seeing what we get up to here again. If, if you've got any friends that might like watching, please do, do share us around, like and subscribe, all of that jazz. Please let us know in the comments if uh, there's anything you'd like, like us to cover in these videos.